beyond the embrace. Thanks. <laughs> record.
I can wish Metal Blade a happy anniversary, 25 years. This is Speed Freak. Baby! 
Drunk to the light, held on too tight. 
out so much, we are three. This song goes out to all of you for still supporting metal through all these years, man. Thank you fucking all very much. Let's see some action on the floor. This is Alchemy of the Black Sun Cult. Let's see some fierce motherfuckers. fucking Yankee sissy shit. Show me that you got balls. I come from the south, motherfuckers. So step on the floor and show me what you have. This is in the narrow confines of the foul mess.
new song from the Hallucinate album. Maybe you have seen it on the television. This is Wicked Saints. song goes out to Metal Blade for the 25th anniversary. Congratulations, motherfuckers. And I want to see a bigger slamming pit than the last one. This one was all right, but I want to see a big one. So kill yourself at the Villa Vampiria.
for us tonight. Thank you for coming to the show. This is the War Cult.
Fuck yeah, man. We got a few more for ya. And the almighty cannibal corpse is gonna come up here. Fuck you the fuck up. It's another old one for ya. From the Unhallowed record. So it's about zombies coming back to fucking life.
Let's seriously open up this fucking pit! This whole goddamn floor has to move! Let's go!
Circle Pit! What's up? Circle Pit! One, two, three! Thank you so much, Worcester. Your glasses. <laughs> Metal Blade Records. Metal Blade. Metal Blade. Metal Blade. Metal Blade up your ass, bro. <laughs> Thank you so much for all your support. Happy 25th. Happy 25th anniversary. 25th yeah. anniversary. 25 years. Has it really been that long? No, no, it hasn't. So it's way longer. Congratulations on being so metally and bladey. <laughs> <laughs> Happy 25th anniversary, Metal Blade! The best supporter of heavy metal music for 25 years now, so we're all very happy to be here. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be standing up against the fence. This is California. no parking. Because I said this, I, I want all the back catalog of everything. Lady! Even the stuff you find questionable. 25 years is not long enough! Hey, who wants to party with me? Woo! Let's go! Everyone who listens to Real Metal 
it owns at least one or two albums from The Blade. I think Metal Blade has lasted for 25 years because of Slagle and his love for metal music and the love that metal fans have for metal music. And that in itself is the reason that Metal Blade has been around for 25 years. How's that for a sweet, like, straight to the point answer? There's really only one reason why Metal Blade lasted this long. Because he started the company the year I was born. And I embody the spirit of Metal Blade. <laughs> it's owned by one person. He doesn't have to answer to a big corporate center with shareholders. Every band that's on Metal Blade, they always be on Metal Blade. They make careers out of it. Metal Blade! They definitely have the right mentality not to try to oversaturate the market with certain things. Not being afraid to fail is very important. The label from top to bottom is Metalheads, from Brian, the CEO, all the way down to the you know, the younger people working there. It's not just some dude they grabbed off of Wall Street that knows how to run a business thing and he's like, all right, this is what we got, we're gonna do it all like this. It's like people that are interested in it, involved in it. Hiring people like Dan Fitz, Mike Bailey. Heather, Tracy, everyone over there is just amazing. You're just as good as the people around you. If you're into your job, it's gonna lead to the business being more successful. Dan Fitz, help me out. Give me a hug. Yeah. Put him out, yeah. Yeah. We've been doing this for a while. We know the scene better than the majors. The big guys, man, the monsters. The they wanna tell you what to do. They they probably want me to sing like hoo hoo and that kind of shit, you know, I can't That's do that. That's pretty good. <laughs> Don't get any ideas, man. We had labels telling us, oh, it's, it's really cool when uh, a band comes up and then I get to see them put a down payment on a house and we're, we're gonna ride limos and do all this shit. And we were like, are you fucking serious, man? Like, you can't possibly be serious. We've actually been approached by some majors and I won't name any names, but from, from the meetings we've taken and just hearing them out, just to hear their perspective, it just confirms even more how Metal Blade is the right home for us. They're the real deal, for sure. Dude, a fleet of they're PTs. not driving like Bentleys, they're no. driving PT Cruisers with their names PT. on the license plates. Or ones like Metal Blade 1, Metal Blade 2, yeah, Metal Blade 3. Fleet. We actually forced our guitar player to ride in the back of a PT Cruiser trunk. That was Slagle's Slagle PT did. Cruiser trunk. He shoved and, them in um, there. Shoved them in there. And then we left them in there as we went to the restaurant, realized that we left them in the trunk. Slagle thought it would be funny. And it was. Yeah, it was great. The community of Metal Blade is very unique. I've been inside of Mike Failey. It's not pretty. Slagle, I've been in there. You don't want to know what's inside of it. It's a lot of metal. A lot of too much metal. I've been inside the damn fits too. But that's fun. Yeah! You can call somebody's label, and if you need something publicity wise, you call the publicity person instead of having to go to ARR, who then goes to publicity, you know, who that, you know, it doesn't trickle down the line. You don't have to go through this very formal system. It's a very uh, intimate relationship. When's Metal Blade gonna send a, like a Santa Claus Metal Blade to my house? And give me some Cannibal Corpse records. Well, you know. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm this comfortable. I've never been more comfortable in my life. Mike Failey will call us like once or twice a week and he'll be like, hey, what's going on? What's happening out on the road? I want to see if everything's all right with you guys. If you ever need anything, if it's four in the morning, you're drunk and you want to call me up and act stupid, do it. Mike Failey, the president, and even Brian Slagle, the owner, I've called them you know, at midnight or one in the morning sometimes, you know, because something that important came up and I know I can always get a hold of them. I got this from Tim and Mises. I thank him for it because it's a beautiful Failey as a dying pin. Slagle's my homeboy and this other one over here with Slagle on it. These are both uh, Ventures of the Red Court, and I think it's great. I, I really think that the Slagle brand name needs to get out there, and uh, this is just a start. I respect Brian Slagle a whole lot, you know, for what he's done just for for this genre of music. Brian, we love you. You have done so much for metal and keeping the flag flying. We appreciate you, you sweaty bastard. He deserves a like, really, really big gold star or a nice bottle of really cool wine. This is Brian Slagle's Chateau Cadillac 2003. I don't know if that's a good gear. He's gonna be very cuddly after this bottle. He's gonna be telling every one of his artists how great they are. Oh, Metal Blade. Feels so good to hear my record sales go down the toilet. They're great guys to hang out with. So that's part of the fun too, is you get to work with them, but they're also people you consider friends and stuff as well, which that's you know really important to us too. The fact that we can be friends with people that are our bosses. They're our boss, what do you mean? <laughs> Half the time we're talking about you know, what bands are out there. Brian knows what metal And of course, you can't stump him when it comes to metal. I always try to find a band that he doesn't know, and you, you can't. We'll talk about a band like Thin Lizzy, and he'll be like, oh man, you gotta hear this, you gotta hear this awesome bootleg. He'll go out of his way to burn a CD for us to listen to, so we can kind of get the same 
the same enthusiasm. He's just still a kind of a huge young kid at heart. So when he signs new bands and, and continues to put out records from bands that are coming out now that are like 19 years old and stuff, it's just because he loves the music. If I put something in and I listen to it and I like it, I want to work with it. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't sign the bands that he has on his label. I mean, he started it where well, it's basement of his mom's house. We were a very small label at the time and I was just a young kid so you know our whole thing back then was you know kind of being the minor leagues farm system you know for for the bigger labels. It's the beginning of some genre that didn't exist before really in the US. So to think that it was like a, an opportunity to grasp it wasn't really that. You, you know you could be a, the biggest opportunist but you wouldn't know what you were grasping. We are proud to be a part of of that history for like the first five minutes. <laughs> Thank you for believing that when I told you that I was gonna get a band together, that you actually believed it and that you saved me and eventually James a spot on your record. And um, that was Metallica yeah. with two T's. Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> a metal massacre. Metal massacre. This is uh, the first thing that Slagle put out. This is compilation. I rocked it tonight for him. That's another thing that totally fucking drew us to him, you know? I mean, putting out, you know, the first known fucking Metallica shit, the first fucking Slayer shit. But we've been listening to that shit for years. I signed Slayer in 1983. We did the first four releases for them, LOH, Show No Mercy, Haunting the Chapel, and Live Undead. They were opening for a band called Bitch that we used to have on the label as well. And I went and saw them and they were amazing. They did the best cover of Phantom of the Upper by Iron Maiden I'd ever seen in my life. And I went backstage and they had some 18 year old kid that was managing them and I said, hey, you know, I love your band. I'm doing these compilation albums you want to be on? And they said, sure. The rest is history, I guess. Merciful Fate was going to be the first song, track one on Metal Massacre 2, side one, track one. But for some reason, um, they couldn't deliver the tracks in time for Metal Massacre 2. So Brian had this open space. Armored Saint was playing our show, one of our shows. This was like early 83, I guess. Oh God, did I just say that? Anyway, he just saw the band and was blown away. And he literally that night came, came up to see us and said, I have an extra space, we have the first track, and that just kind of led to our long relationship with Metal Blade after 25 years. Brian's been a huge supporter of Armored Saint since day one, he's been a big fan. We owe a lot to Brian since that first meeting until now, it's been great. Watching um, the whole thing unfold uh, with the magazine and hanging out at the record stores and, and doing our thing back in the day. When we walk into a record store, we're all like, you know, we heard there was a guy there who was starting a record, doing record compilations, and we went in there, and we kind of walked up, handed him our CD and said, hey, we'd like to be on your compilation record. And he said, sure, cool. And then all of a sudden he goes and he puts it in the player and starts playing the tape, and we're like, holy crap! And everybody in the store was listening. We were running on. We're looking good things. Pretend, pretending we're not, this isn't us. No, we're just kidding. And he's like, back there going like this, this is cool, I like yeah. this. He came right back and said, you'll be on the next record. And we're like, Really? When we signed, we were already signing to a label that was pretty legendary in our eyes. You gotta be pumped if you're on a label that released Diamond Head and Slayer Records, Cannibal Corp. Bolt Thrower. Records you grew up on, and then that label right there is on your record. It's you know, pretty daunting. <laughs> My first band that I was ever in, when I was 14, like our dream was to be signed to Metal Blade Records. And, uh, you know, we that band didn't get signed to it, but my band made our lives good, which is kind of sweet. I guess being on Metal Blade, I, I can kind of say it was a childhood dream of mine. I used to go and, like, cut out all these pictures from the BMG catalogs and make these little posters, and it was all these Metal Blade bands. Guar and King's X and the Screw CD. That was, like, my, my first big introduction to Metal Blade. Oh, I mean that and, you know, Goo Goo Dolls. Goo Goo Dolls. Goo Goo Dolls. It's a different Metal Blade, man. It's part of the puzzle, man. <laughs> when I'm around like metal dudes and stuff, they're like, oh, what label you guys are? I'm like, Metal Blade. They're like, no way. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> the main reason we wanted to be on Metal Blade was actually because of Cannibal Corpse and that they've had a 15 year career and that it keeps going and that they've, they've fulfilled their contract and re signed many times. And any band that's, that's put out, you know, 10 records on, on the same label must obviously love the label and love the working relationship. If younger bands getting signed to Metal Blade now, if we're one of the reasons that they like the label, that's, a, you know, something that's very flattering to us because we like 
the label because it was a great metal label that had those killer bands. Not like a, a label drop, like, oh yeah, we're a metal play, but I'm stoked to be on it. The scene's been great. There's obviously this huge resurgence now led by, you know, guys like him. Trends come and go, but kids like live and breathe this stuff and Metal Blade has always been the label to keep up with like what was going on in metal and putting it out. Metal isn't just music, it's a way of life, it's a culture. Metal Blade's been supporting that culture for 25 years now, from Boy Bonds, Fates Morning, all the way to the bands of today, such as Iman and Marth, and I'm very proud to support Metal Blade and love everything that they've done. I love it when you know any kid comes up and says, hey, thank you for putting such a thing out. And for me, it's like, hey, thank you for liking it and enjoying it and buying it. As long as there's great bands out there and a great scene, you know, we want to be a part of it. So I think that's probably why we've been stuck around for a while. One thing that I really like about extreme music and underground music in general, it wasn't really about rock stars or anything like that. It was very much like everyone's on the same level. Metal bands are fans that play instruments. People are looking up to you, but at the same time, I don't feel like I'm there and they're here. You can relate to the people that were up on stage because they were the same as you. Good answer, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Underground is not about Harry, Dick, and Tom and what they did and how cool it is and how you need to do the same fucking thing. It's about doing your own shit. Underground music exists outside of major label attention, radio push, and stuff like that. You might hear your friend listening to a CD and be like, oh man, where'd you get that? Never heard that before. And you actually have to go out and seek it out. The internet's a super tool these days. That's what keeps it as huge as it is right now. It's not like when, you know, when I was younger, yeah, I'm old, so. <laughs> when I was younger, you, it was all snail mail, pretty much, you know? Send a tape overseas and then wait two weeks, get a tape back from overseas. Through our MySpace, we got the attention. We were like 15 and 16 and we could not tour, so we had to do something else. I think it's a fad. <laughs> it's just a fad. It's like metal, right? Yeah, yeah metal yeah. and the internet are going. They said, they, said, <laughs> they said metal was a fad 25 years ago. It's a long fad. The underground is always there. Even when people say metal's dead and it doesn't seem to be at its high point anymore, underground is always there and it'll always be there. I'm spreading this evil seed as much as I possibly can to everybody who will accept it. I want to expose it to as many people as I can affect with it. That's what the underground is about. It's everyone who loves this music coming together. Still being to interact with your fans goes a long way too, you know, because sometimes you get these people that get signed to like major or fucking, they're making all kinds of fucking money or whatever. They blow their fans off, you know, like who the fuck, why would you do that? Kids not gonna go, hey man, can you sign this? And, and death metal, everyone's easily approachable. I met all the guys from Animal Corps and those dudes were freaking ridiculously nice to me. And it makes you feel like you're more a part of it. I mean, sometimes you get people that maybe want a little bit too much, that happens, but that's so rare that never even, you know, sours you want. I had this guy in Ogden, Utah come up to me. I was sitting there drinking a beer and he gets on his knees next to me and he puts his hand on my leg and says, I was told to come give you oral sex. <laughs> a guy in, where was that? Was that Pittsburgh or Philly? Oh, he wanted this us guy to sign, sign his testicle. And we're like, no. He was pissed that we wouldn't do it either. He was really, I think, hurt, you know? Oh, I mean, wow. A dude had like elephantitis of his, uh, of his nutsack. Whoa and he stuck it up against a chain link fence and asked us to sign it. I've never signed balls before. Well, I signed a 40-year-old lady's butthole. butthole. So did I. <laughs> Just got out of jail. She walked in jail with oh, show. No, she, oh, wow, I didn't even know that. She was like, well, I'll sign my ass. I'm like, okay. Pulls his pants down, has like a kite string. The most, yeah, like fucking fish underwear. string thing that I've ever seen in my life. And she just opens like, her butt. So we went for it. <laughs> that was a good story. The music survives because of the fans, first and foremost. They want to be a part of the band, they want to feel that, and that's what the shows do. The fact that all have been so loyal, and they continue to be loyal again, is just amazing. And for me, you know, a guy that was around in the er in the first wave of this 25 years ago, it's great to see the whole cycle come back around. Old school and new school all mixed together, putting out things that uh, we're freaking out about. It's, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. Thanks, Lizzie. The scene is very similar. The fashion is very similar. It's great to see a new generation of fans, and that's why we do it. So I was going to be uh, pimply fat nerds out there that need to get, you know, who are upset at their parents, upset at school, and the kids that pick on them. And, you know, we speak to them for some reason. We're going to be late. Yeah, we're pimply fat nerds ourselves. A lot of kids growing up, like if they get into metal at an early age, they kind of feel like an outsider. When they meet someone else that's into metal, they're like, yeah, kind of get like a different bond. Because of metal, he's my brother. <laughs> Look at this. I've met him before. There's definitely a family feeling among metal fans where you're kind of outside the mainstream. It gets all my frustration out, and I love the lyrics. Metal, don't we? Don't we?
can express the dark side of the human experience. I think the metal fans are a lot more passionate about metal than like a rap fan will just jump on the next bandwagon that comes along or the next rapper that comes along. It's reflected in how much we all argue with each other about which band is better, who's faster, who's heavier. You're not going to see dance music fans saying all this whatever is they're too busy better dancing than this. they don't care they don't, they're not interested it's a lifestyle for them just like it's a lifestyle for us you bang your head real damn hard real damn it, hard it, tell me what other music besides metal you can bang your head real damn hard to it's yeah, something about chemicals in your brain or some shit yeah, i don't, I don't, I don't know, get it. yeah man <laughs> you got to do some science i think there's some science there it's not like you're going to have some dude that's going to be like yeah i was into Slayer last year. It's not like that. You're into it for life, and that's the way it is. Or you're a poser, you can get the hell out of it. That music just meant everything to us when we were kids. It's not like we chose metal, it's like metal chose us. Since I first heard it, it's been the biggest deal in the world to me to be in the metal. It's a positive outlet of negative energy. It fills a void in their lives, and playing the music fills a big void in our lives. People who listen to metal as kids listen to metal as adults. It's something that moves them, and like they identify themselves with certain points of their lives and certain bands. If you go to Slayer shows now, you see dudes that went through school, college, they are working at IBM, and they're in a business suit, and you know, they married and have kids, but they're at the Slayer concert because they grew up with it and it ran with them with their life. And when the wife says, okay, you know, you gotta get rid of shit, he's like, I'll get rid of the porno mags, but I'm not getting rid of the Slayer CDs. <laughs> Shit don't wash off. Dirt it don't wash off. <laughs> if you're a metalhead, you're part of something. If you have a band and you're pretty much a family because you spend so much time together throughout a whole year. You meet other bands and you have, you know, shared experiences and they see you struggle and then you see them struggling. It feels great just to go anywhere on tour. You travel the world and we just see friends that we've known for years and years. It's the closest friends that we've ever had. You live your life with these people on the road and that's a special bond. Everybody in the scene are all friends, whether it's the bands, the booking agents, the managers. And that's a real big reason why I think the scene is so healthy as it is too. It's a big community where everybody's in it for the same overall goal of getting the music out to more people. Platonic metal man love. You don't get much more love than having your boss come and crowd surf on you. <laughs> it doesn't get much more loving than that. These two guys are the best guys I've yeah. ever met in my life. And I just, just, I just that. really, I can't believe what they did for the community tonight. Groupies are off the thing. Let's go to the band. Bands appear larger than life, but when you look at it, their approach and their ethic is very like, you know, we're from the streets. We're just like kids who are, are stoked and passionate about this music like you guys are, you know? That's like that. Amazing. I've seen it at least six times. Dude, I thought it was eight. No, I'm just kidding. Well, maybe eight. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys up there are no different for me. They're just dudes that are stoked on riffs and being sweet. And never once would be like, oh dude, you smoked us. Oh dude, how was that lick in the third verse of this? No one is talking shit, no one's competing. Now kids compete. Kids are like, oh dude, blah blah blah, as they lay down. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. No, for real, there's kids that are always trying to cut each other's throat. To try to get one step ahead of the next band, cut another throat, get ahead. All of our bands just kind of hung out. We we're friends and then everything around us held us together. It may be cliche, but we're all metal brothers. We all have one thing in common. We love this music. It's changed all our lives in one way or another. This is what I've been dreaming about since I was, I don't remember how old. If I can stay on the road doing anything and not making any money, then I'm going to do it as long as I can. If you want to be in music, you have to really want it. You can never expect it to be easy at all. Even if the band sells a good amount of records, it's still always a struggle. We work hard. We sleep in a van every night after we play shows. We travel across the states in a van. Some bands get buses when they get a chance, and sometimes they gotta go back to van. There's always issues that come up that if you're not totally in love with what you do, it'll make you want to quit in a second. And we love playing death metal. To be able to make a modest living doing it is a dream come true, and we've never had any thought about doing something else. I mean, that's what we always wanted to do, so we'll do it as long as we can. If the label really believes in the band, and the band really believes in themselves, you know, a label like Metal Blade is ultimately the perfect home. Mike, he gets passionate about something, it's like... Bam. Drop the hammer down, bam! Yeah, let's move this over here so we can get this thing and drop it down. I'm nervous. I'll take the balloons. When did you become president of Metal Blade 2, guy who's moving couch? Mike Faley is my biggest life inspiration. Inspiration isn't coming from me. 
Aggravation. We need to make a call to a shoe company and get Slagle to start wearing black shoes instead of his white shoes. Well, I mean, he's old school thrash metal, Hessian yeah, shoes. Man. You know, it's totally true. But he needs to step into the new evil end, too, and wear some black <laughs> shoes. Slagle wants to look like DMC. It's fucking cool with me, man. He could say, you know what? I got Slayer records in my back catalog. Yeah. So I'm Kiss wearing sweatpants yeah, yeah. and white shoes. Thank you to all the people at New England Metal Fest. Because if it wasn't for them, we could never get a this whole thing. Dude, let me just tell you something. Scotty has the biggest heart. His heart is in here. It's the whole body. <laughs>